Kenny from Northern Performance Cars here again. Um, I was in the middle of degreeing a camshaft in this engine and I thought I'd make a video really quick to not show you how to degree a camshaft because there's plenty of those out there, but to tell you why you should degree a camshaft just in case you think that it's liner up dot to dot, good to go. It's not always the case, especially if you use an aftermarket crankshaft, aftermarket timing set, etc. There's a lot of things that come into play. So first off, we'll talk about the crankshaft. So on the end of the crankshaft here, as you can see on the snout, uh, think of it as a full rotation. So it's 360 degrees. So, you know, not saying that any of the companies would do wrong, but this timing key has to be, you know, 359 to one degree to be dead centered at 360, obviously. So to say that that's in the exact correct location is not always a great assumption. So. First off, I started with the JP Performance um, timing set, the nice little hundred-ish dollar billet stuff that they have available. Um, so when I get this up here on the zero mark, with zero as top dead center, the piston's been verified two different ways, top dead center exactly. Um, so that's not the case, so that's definitely good there. Uh, but anyways, as you can see where the zero mark is, it almost acts like is it's kind of going off to the left. It's definitely not centered in between the two uh, timing tensioner bolt holes that are, Dart has died, you know, drilled in here. So that regardless, that's not the problem. But as you can see, the zero kind of gives it an offset to the left look. So these usually are pretty good. Uh, this one has a little bit of play. So when I degreed this cam, I seen that it was about one degree off. So I thought, you know what, let's break it down and see which part is which. Um, so luckily I have a few different timing gears here to try. So we'll throw this OEM one on here really quick. And as you can see, it almost appears like it has more of a straight up and down look to it. A little closer to the center, but still a little bit to the left. So now we'll try this Cloy's hex adjust. So this one as well. So as you can see, this one almost seems like it's a degree, a few degrees, whatnot. It, to the eye, you can tell, you know, just by this video that it has more of a little bit more of a straight up and down appeal to it by the gear tooth itself. So like I said, it's not exactly a good idea always to throw a cam in dot to dot. If anything else, there could be some performance gains to be had if the cam is retarded one, two, three degrees. Uh, like I said, I mean, if the dowel pin on the camshaft itself isn't ground in perfectly between the cam, the crankshaft, and then the timing set, you could, you know, ultimately see two, three, four, five, six degrees difference. So it's definitely always a good idea to get a timing wheel, make sure you mechanically set top bed center, verify it a couple ways if you have to, and degree the camshaft in. Then uh, the cam did need one degree of retard, which I do believe stemmed from the crankshaft being two degrees off. Uh, which obviously the crank rotates twice as many times as the camshaft. So on the spec sheet, how to basically go about this is the camshaft uh, grinders will do duration at 50 inches of lift. So basically your valve should open at 50, 10.4 uh, degrees before top dead center. And then close at 54.6 degrees after bottom dead center. Um, so with the camshaft dot to dot, what we had was 12 degrees BTDC and then 53 and a half, give or take, you know, ATDC. Um, retarded the cam one degree. And we got to the 10 and a half and the 54 and a half, which is what cam motion suggested, 10.4 and then 54.6, which obviously my decimal places are only gonna be so close on that degree wheel, uh, half's close enough. So what you have at the end of the day, um, 10 and a half, 54 and a half, Basically, you're gonna do 10 and a half plus 54 and a half plus 180, which gives you 245, which is the actual intake cam duration, 245. You're gonna divide that by two, it gives you 122.5, and then subtract the 10 and a half for the BTDC, and that gives you the 112, which they want the center line installed at 112.2. So it's kind of like a brief, you know, just description on how you're supposed to do that. Uh, anyways, I just figured I'd throw that little detail on the end of there of what changes when you retard or obviously the opposite direction when you advance the camshaft. So anyways, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully that helps. I didn't want to get in great detail. I basically just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware that there are, you know, other issues outside of what, nothing ever just goes dot to dot. 
one degree wouldn't hurt anything, uh, but there would be a little bit of performance to be had down there. So you definitely want to degree your camshafts and then uh, stay tuned because I'm going to finish up one more job here in the near future. 